Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. Today, we are going to be finishing up, so I guess this is called part two of the internal package transport system. Basically, today, we're going to show off this elevator that I've made and then finish up the transport cart that I also made. Thank you for the reminder that painting the blocks makes the bridge stop bugging out. I don't know what you guys say it is. So thanks for that reminder in the comments. I appreciate it. And thank you for all your other comments and whatnot. Okay, let's just get right to it. I have this, whatever this is called right here. This is a trolley is what I'm trying to make it out of. And I went grinding for the last two days, basically. I spent a couple hours each day trying to just go get component kits and that got me enough for some pistons and a lot of other good stuff and a lot of metal too. So I made a piston elevator, but I wanna show off this stuff first. What this is, is a basic controller controlled cart, a way to, pay, to say it, and it's going to hold, I think up to four is the goal. So if we can do four packages at a time, that would be cool. I know it's kind of useless because there's no really need to even give packages, but you can get, I think, fertilizer from this stuff, which is cool. So I might just, you know, play with that. I know you can do it on the crafting bot too. That's okay. Anyways, so this will fit around four. I will probably have them more spaced out. So let's just actually move this over yonder. Let's see, like so. And this will be three right here. And then we can definitely fit a fourth right around there. I don't know which way is going to be the front or back yet, but we'll figure it out when we get there. Okay. So my idea for this is to have it um, slide into this cart and then the cart itself will push these against the front end or the wall so that they can all fit inside of it. I'll have to make sure things are aligned up properly, but this should work. I haven't made the pushing system yet, but I think we can make this work. So for now, what we're going to have is just have this about this big. I'm not sure exactly how wide I need it to be but I need to make the pushing mechanism. What we're gonna have is the idea is to have a piston and a sensor. So whenever a box comes in, it just pushes it all the way out here and then pulls back and that'll be it. So I don't know if I have, I only have four logic gates and five timers on me. So I might need to go grab some more, but let's get this thing built. Okay, the simple mechanism has been built. I don't know if it's going to 100% work the more I think about it, but it might. Let's put this thing like right here or something like that. And so it comes here, it pushes it, and then eventually, oh, because it's doing that, it's not going to, ah, I see. Let me just make this lower, see if that does anything. Well, I think that actually did work. And then let's try it again with another one. This one. So preliminary testing is actually working. I do think there might be a problem when it comes to, uh, what's it called? Like fitting these things in because this piston will always go the constant length. It won't like adjust for the new I guess the less space that it has when there's these in there. So I might have to think of a different sort of mechanism. But for now, I think we're going to just try to see if we can just smack these all in here and hope for the best. I honestly think this does work, actually. I just tested it out. And with these in here, it doesn't like completely break the things. And since I have it at a uh, lower rate of time, it won't push too much further far or too too far against the whole thing it'll just go for about three or so and honestly i don't even need to make it go the full range because each one as long as i just make it ah i see so i can turn this down even i wasted ugh, this doesn't need to be a level five piston but if i just turn it up like that and then it'll be it'll be fine okay all right so this will be the jamming mechanism that jams all the packages in and i think this will fit four i don't have a fourth package 
So let's actually just grab one really quickly. Out goes the thing. Let's hope this is still going. I have this automatically turns off every time I reload the game, but that's okay. I'll just turn it back on. Um, hello? Oh, there it goes. Okay. And then it slides. Hopefully it makes it. Oof. I think there was probably some issues with something, but I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. So let's just make sure. We'll have to see if there's something that we can do to make sure that's completely consistent. That'll go there. And while I'm here, I'm going to actually just show off this elevator that I have. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you for the suggestion to use the piston stoppers. I haven't really put it together yet or done that, but I don't know if I will actually need to because the way this works, I don't think I'll have to. Essentially what this does is goes here. Uh, I don't think that's actually on up top, so it might not even work. So it probably isn't, but we'll see. And then it goes up. It comes up here to this point. And then from there, I'm going to have something um, push it off like that. It'll be a pretty large push. And then it'll come over here and then drop in. I don't know if you guys are making any sense to what I just said, but... It makes sense to me, and that's all that really matters. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much going to be the system. This... I don't know if it didn't work or not, or if I should probably move... I probably should, is move this sensor to another point. So if I actually... Like that. Oh gosh. Oh no, I wasn't ready. Whoops. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. We have finished... I tried to bring this into the light so I could see a little bit better. I put this a little bit too crowded in a too crowded spot. So let's bring this out here and reset this bit because putting it on the list does that. And so now everything is reset. I fixed the bearings if that makes sense. So I didn't really add anything. I just added the walls, made them a little bit higher. I'm actually going to take down these right here because I don't think maybe they should be that high. I don't know. I'm running out of net though. So I got to start conserving it. I can always make some more though. I fixed the controllers. Now that they are going to be properly moving forward and backwards, the guys are just on a 360 rotation at their fastest and connected to the inside axles. And then this is 360 on a different direction, connected to the outside axles, and that'll make it move forward and backwards at a time. And then there is just a sensor here, and all this sensor does is just attach to this bit and turn it off so that if it senses anything while it's moving forward, it turns it off. And then same thing on this side too, so I can go forwards and backwards easily. Next, what I need to do and completely forgot about is actually making an injection, ejection menu mechanism so that I can actually unload these uh, packages off onto the trading thing. And so in order to do that, I believe I'm going to have to have some sort of door. I'm not entirely sure where exactly that lines up with the pad. It might be too far to the left, but an idea I had was just to make basically make this piston extend out and open this and it pushes everything out. But I don't know if that's really possible. There's just multiple ways to do this. I'm just trying to find the easiest way for me. I where did all my bearings go? I'm I'm pretty sure I have bearings somewhere. Hold on, let me grab some. Okay. Grab some bearings. And so essentially my idea for ejection or easy-ish ejection would be. Uh, to grab a couple, well, I need some net because I'm using net in case you guys are wondering because it's the lightest material and I have a feeling that this thing is going to struggle to move with all the heavy packages on top of it. So I wanted to at least make the vehicle itself light as possible. Could have probably done it here, but eh, it's fine. So basically what I have is this door, I guess you can call it that. And so what I'm just going to make it do is go all the way down and then attach it to another bearing if that makes sense so what I'm doing here is putting it onto a lift and going to attach this to that and these together so now that's a single wall and I'm going to use this controller I don't know why I have a level 5 controller but I'm just going to use it and so let's put that there and put that there this might not actually work because once it goes on it might yeah there's going to be a lip and then it won't push out properly so i'm going to have to make this wall lower so i'm going to put it on 
bring the bearings down by one. So let me do that really quickly. Okay, I moved the wall to the other side. I'm actually going to add one more layer up on of it so that we can at least make sure that these packages won't fly out prematurely. So let's move this down. And so now once this goes, or that switch turns on, the packages should have more room to fall down here. Okay, so next, all we're gonna do is actually modify this other wall, so the other side. All right, so now that this wall is in, there's nothing special about it except for what I'm about to add right here. Now we've got that there. And so basically what this is gonna be is I'm going to actually remove this entire middle section and then reattach it to what's on the piston so that, I, mean, I don't know if you guys are knowing what I'm doing, but I'm basically making it so that this part of the wall just slides with the piston while the other part of the wall stays still. So essentially if I have a switch, uh, basically pushes that out and let's put this out here and level nine is a bit far, eight is far, seven is perfect, okay. So seven blocks is perfect. And that should push all of the packages out and hopefully down onto the box, whatever it is. Okay, perfect. We're making progress, everybody. This is good, this is good, this is good. So now what I need to do is figure out how to automate this. So what I plan on doing is having it so that once this is full, it will start it'll trigger this forward bit and this will cause the car to move forward and the next question is how will i know when this is completely full and that will be when there is a package right here for longer than let's say 10 seconds or so i'm going to need some another sensor and then to make sure it's empty we'll figure that out when we get there okay let's just grab the sensor and then get back to work. <laughs> Whoops. I'm trying to place hold or place placeholders where these packages should be when they're all in, but trying to do it without using the lift is a bit difficult because it places the, them down sideways. Okay, perfect. So this is where they are going to be, essentially somewhere around this point, I'm hoping. so. If we put a sensor right around here, okay? And then have that there. We'll have it to be sensing one is fine. And now we need to attach it to a timer. Let's put the logic for this timer right down here. So then if this is on, and then we need an AND gate here, AND gate. And we need to attach this to that and make this a couple seconds. And then once this goes on, then that turns on uh, this right here. Perfect. So now if I take it off, it should, oh, it won't stop it until something comes in front of it like this. Yep, okay. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this will basically, I mean, I haven't really tested it out yet, but will work is what I'm really assuming. We're gonna do a unit test right now, actually. Okay, here is a testing platform that I've developed uh, while off camera. So this is just basically going to test out whether this will function somewhat normally. What I'm actually gonna do is literally just grab this box right here, put it here for now, and then I'm gonna put a wall right here so that it won't go flying off onto the abyss. Simple wall, should be good. Okay, I placed it down. That should make this controller go. And going. And there she goes. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It looks like this is spinning the wrong way, but I can't be sure. I think this is actually spinning the wrong way. So let me just... Okay, now that we know that this works, we are going to try to see if we can build the offloading mechanism now. And in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is essentially once this sensor is on, it will, hmm, because there's a possibility it won't stay on. That's the only thing I'm worried about, but I think this should be fine if I have the end look like this. So once this is on, then this will trigger a timer or a, maybe just a logic bit. I'll just put a logic bit right here with a timer on it that opens up 
So basically turns on this right here. Okay, perfect actually. No, this will be good. Oh wait, we don't even need to do the timer. We can just go directly to it. Wait a minute. So we can just put the sensor right to this and that controls the gate to open up and this controls the piston. And what we can do here is have it go so it turns these the right way and then it will extend this piston out by nine, I think is what it was. Nine or eight, I don't know which one. I think it was probably eight. But I don't think it matters that much because this gate will already be open. Okay, so then once it does that, hmm, I'm going to need to make it start moving backwards. And so in order to do that, what we can do is just have a quick timer. We'll need a timer. I didn't want to use a timer, but we're gonna have to because I don't want to use another sensor to do this. So we're just gonna use a timer and time it for about like 15 or so seconds. Let's do 10 seconds actually. Let's do 10 seconds. Once that goes, it turns on this bit right here and that makes it go backwards. What we're gonna do now is attach this sensor also to this timer. And then once that goes for 10 seconds, it'll start moving backwards and reset this clock or reset the uh, offloading mechanism, maybe. Yep, okay, now it's going backwards and I forgot to put a wall here and it's just gonna drive right off. I could probably do with making this a little faster by adding another, I can't do it evenly though, so it'll have to move faster forward than backwards, but we'll see. Okay, so that's essentially, I think, I keep saying essentially and probably and basically all the time, that's going to be the drinking word of the day. That's pretty much the whole offloading and onloading mechanism. I just need to make sure that this will work next and then we can get this whole system working. Well, actually what I brought here is a seat and I'm going to attach this seat to... Uh, let's say the bottom of this like right here or so hopefully that'll fit in there The reason why I'm placing this seat down here is so that I can stay with the car or the player can stay with the car While it's traveling down that road because we all know the car will despawn or the crates will despawn if this goes far enough away So what I'm gonna do is just have it so that I'm always sitting here and the rest of the farm is running automatically And then I'll just follow this car back and forth as time goes on. I'll need to work on the logic so that it automates and doesn't do anything crazy while I'm missing. And so when it comes back, it can start up again, the elevator and all that stuff will start working. But we will get there when we get there. It's one step at a time. That's kind of how I work. Okay, it's a little bit lighter outside. So now I'm going to do a unit test. The only thing I changed was added this light right here and painted it uh, white with the only <laughs> canister of paint that I had left. So <laughs> that's funny. Basically what we're gonna do is just put as many well we're gonna stick a few packages inside and then see if we can get this to work we'll just preload it already it's fine i don't think it'll be that big of a deal if it's not in straight i should have a fourth package somewhere but i don't know where it went do that there that pushes it there we should be good Where's the fourth package? I've lost it somewhere. Oh, there it is, <laughs> hiding from me. I'm excited, I hope this works because this might be one of the simplest and least overcomplicated creations that I've made uh, for this build. Everything else seems to be completely overcomplicated and you guys like to point that out, which is fine, but as long as it works is really all that matters for me. Oh gosh, oh no. Oh goodness. Okay, well that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> this definitely might be a problem here. So what might, actually what I might be able to do is have it so that I can make this move a little bit slower and see if it doesn't break everything. Let me try this again. Okay. Well, that worked, kind of, not really. No, I was just trying to move. It goes there, it's unloading. And it's pushing it off. They're caught on stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> and it fell off. And that's where it's supposed to... Okay, this is gorgeous. I can add like guide rails to the end of the thing to make sure they fall straight down if it becomes a problem. But this should be good. Unless these packages all bounce off of the square, then this will work. Wow, okay. And this came back. And it already came back here and it stopped. And I just put little stoppers right there just to make it do that. And it's 100%. It did it. I mean, kind of. But it did. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I have a huge smile on my face right now. I'm just excited to see how it works. So what we're gonna have to do is figure out a way to transport this all the way up to the top and place it down. And then we'll work on this pushing piston thing. And then we'll do 
a test. And then the next episode, we're going to do a full on run and maybe even a time lapse of how it goes. I'll need to clean up some more stuff off camera, but for now, this is what we got and I'm excited for it. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh, dang it. Well, I, I lived. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I survived that fall. But, uh, yeah, I, I've died actually so many times I resulted to bringing my bed over here, which was probably a thing I should have done in the first place. But having to die and then run back over was kind of annoying, so I, <laughs> I moved my car over there. We're here upstairs. Oh, gosh. Oh, made it. We're here, and I need to figure out how to get up without... Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's just let's just build a second way around because that's currently blocked. So let's just do that real quick. I should not have used net for that. So we're here and we are up and uh, I don't know how to properly get this thing back onto the fucking tracks. Oh, hey, <laughs> Woo. excuse my almost language there. I, I just I've, I'm just getting frustrated right now because I keep falling off. Okay, here we are, and I think this thing is too tall. Oh no, this was an oversight by me. This is not bueno at all, actually. There, oh gosh. Wow, that went flying. I think this is on, and I think that fits pretty nicely too, actually. Okay. So now this is on the tracks and it's actually the perfect height. I didn't even plan this out, but it's the perfect height just to kind of slide in. And I can add a stopper wall on this side so that they can get in easier. And then we're just going to move this forward a little bit so that we can get it in the right position. So, oh, shoot, how am I going to do that? No, that's not going to work. Is it stuck on something? Every time. I just die every time. It's it's the worst. I don't understand it. Okay. Well, we're back and it's daytime and I moved everything up. I adjusted it properly. I just died and now the final step to my I guess plan is to get the pusher working or something like that. If not, I might just do a conveyor belt, but I rather have a pusher because it goes a lot faster. All we need to do is basically connect this sensor up to a mechanism right here a very simple mechanism we're gonna have it oh, one net left are you kidding me all right well we're just gonna use concrete i guess or or use stone we'll just use brick it's fine so we're gonna have a pipe or piston right here we might need two pistons if i'm not mistaken but that's okay oh i have another piston in my inventory which is good so let's go one two three four five that'll fit that uh, another one underneath and then we'll have this at fastest speed fastest power or yeah whatever and then we'll put this here and then i might need to make this piston a little bit closer so i can get more range out of it but essentially if i put that there it doesn't look pretty because i didn't put it in the right way so we'll see i'll have to go go back down and do a full test so let's just drop this back down real quick. Will that land on it? No, probably not. Oh, it will. Huh. <laughs> well, it's not going to work because the elevator isn't down. Oh, I also added logic so that when the elevator isn't down to the floor, it will not go to that area where the elevator comes down into. So if we watch it or if I adjust this thing while we wait, it'll stop right there. Basically, what I'm trying to say right now is that it will not move beyond that point it'll stop itself on the conveyor belt because the elevator is not there as you can see right here it is stopped i don't know if you can see that through there i wish i could zoom in but yeah so it's not moving any further down and so hopefully that'll give time for the elevator to go down and then once the elevator goes down it will move forward again but i'll show you guys that in closer detail later okay so what i just ended up doing was move this piston closer to where the elevator is Hopefully that won't break things or I might need to move it one further back because the box might get caught onto here. So we'll see. I might need to add like some sort of guide rail rails or walls around the container too, but we'll see. And this sensor connects to this timer here and this timer goes for about, let's make this like five seconds. I don't want it to be too long. So five seconds long. 
And so once a um, box gets there, the this sensor turns on one timer and that timer turns on this piston and that hopefully launches it in the right way. And then this timer times out after five seconds, turning off this bit that's up here connected to this controller. And that controller is what controls, um, this is a thing that controls all the pistons and whatnot. And it's hard to describe, but basically it all gets the things working. If you guys want more details and exact uh, tutorial on how I get this all to work, let me know and I will definitely uh, give that to you and but I, the reason why I'm kind of skipping through all this is because I want to get this project done I don't want to waste a bunch of episodes trying to get this all working and all that stuff so I just want to show you guys the finished product versus you know me just making a bunch of episodes of me making little tiny parts of it but this this should be the end of it once I get this uh, completely working then that'll be the end of this project it'll take one more episode to show the full thing but overall I think this works let's get this reset and then I'll come back to you when it's over there to get back on the elevator. All right, it's coming down right now. It's coming across this sensor right here, which senses it once it gets pretty close. And I can see there's a bit of movement right there. So I may need to add um, some sort of railing system, but basically once that sensor goes, it starts a timer. And once that timer goes, then it sends up the elevator. So let's go up here. It looks like something got broken. But it worked. Hey, it worked. Check that out. It didn't go. It didn't launch as far as I wanted it to. But that's okay. I ex that's what I kind of expected, anyways. But it worked. <laughs> now I gotta do is just add one or two more pistons, and I have one, at least one more piston. So we'll test it out on one piston or two pistons, and then <laughs> this might work actually because it slid off pretty well. All right, test number three or two. I don't know what number this is, but coming up here and it goes, hopefully the sensor will sense it. Oh, I see. It kind of gets a bit weird. And then that drops there. Oh, I just fell off into my death. Dang it. But it looks like it worked. <laughs> I kind of ruined the test uh, with uh, my death, but it looked like it worked though. And this also looks like it's Oh, I see what's going on here. I added like little walls here to stop it from jiggling around, but I think those walls are actually making this thing get stuck right here and causing that sensor to go off. So let's actually just deal with the jiggling around and put that there. Cool, let's grab our stuff and then see exactly where the package ended up. Oh, well, <laughs> I just did it again. It looks like it didn't work completely. Um, that could be cause that could be because of various things. I'm not entirely sure what happened here, but it looked like it slid in, but then got pushed over fine, but it just didn't fall in properly. It like tilted down and came in, which is, which makes sense actually. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to make this thing out wider. I'm going to have to make this cart wider, but I don't want to, which I can pretty easily do. I think if I make it out wider by one on both sides, I'll just have to reset everything, which is fine. What I've gone and done is actually made this wider on both sides. So now this bridge is extended a little bit shorter. I found another light in my box, so I have that and I don't know where to put it. I'm going to probably put it somewhere on this or next to it. I'm not really sure yet. I'll just set these here for now though, because I could care less about lighting this thing up right now. I just want it to work. This should all be properly fit up. So this should go and push the carts away when they can. I might make this a little bit faster. Perfect, okay. So now we gotta do is just test again and I'll come back when we are all the way back up here. All right, we are waiting up here for the package to arrive. It looks like it should be on and here it comes. I'm going to preempt it coming up and hopefully getting launched properly. All right, it comes up. It does hit that thing a little bit, which does become a problem, but it slides in just fine. And that goes. Okay. And then the next package will come in. We'll do that now. Okay. Let's do the next four manually and then we'll end it at call it a day because this works i think i mean once it launches off by itself then it'll be a complete success this was probably a bad idea to load test it 
<laughs> but, I mean, since it's here, we might as well do it. I don't know. <laughs> this this probably won't work because I put so much up here, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going to go back up there and then see if we can get this working or not. But it looks like it's first or the second package is coming up. And then the rest of them are waiting down there, waiting for this elevator to come back down. And that time it didn't hit the wall, which is good. It landed in here. It pushed it good. All right. And now this is coming back down. Come on now, come on. And that one's loading in. Now that's there. The next package should stop itself. Yep, next package stops. It brings it up. Hopefully this is big enough. This is starting to look like there's not enough space for four. Yeah, I need to fix that. I need to probably just move that wall out a little bit and it should be fine. But we'll see. But now that's fit all the way there. And now this is coming back down. Wow, this is actually looking really good. Honestly, this looks really, really good. I'm going to go sit in the seat here. And this is where I will be if I am like AFK farming or doing something like that. But I need to be able to reach the seat. Oh, no. Slide this out right here and go there. All right. Elevator's coming up. It still hits that thing. Oh, I could put a ramp. That's what I'll do. I'll put some ramps or something so that it slides in a little bit cleaner. And that's fine. That stops it. And that makes the timer go off. And the timer isn't... Oh, shoot. Oh, no. All right, I just hope that thing doesn't go without me. That would be quite unfortunate. Because I think I have the sensor set up a bit wrong, actually. So we are back up. And it's constantly doing this, but this sensor needs to be set to 3, not 4. That way, that's fine. And this sensor needs to be set to 4. And that way, it's set up properly. And now it's proper, because I didn't set the sensor up. Okay. Now it should send itself off on its own. Oh, wait. No, wait for me. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now we're on it. The packages are sliding around a little bit, but I do have that piston kind of pushing it in place, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now we have to wait the long haul all the way across this. Oh, I forgot to set up the end point. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, let's see if I can land this. Nope. I got so tired of running up this mountain and trying to figure my way around. I actually just put seats all the way up, which was probably smart on my part, honestly. Okay. Oh. I guess that was one of my frames of references just laying right here. All right. So what I'm going to do here is now just actually stop the vehicle right here. And so that I can just test everything out. And it looks like... Oof, I'm going to have to move the seat because that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I can move the seat to the back or something. That's not a big deal. Okay. So let's actually just put that down there. Um... It looks like it messed up everything, but let's pretend that this is over top of the box and now that's falling and now this should be trying to come back, but it can't because it went off track because it was leaning. But I count that as an absolute win, to be honest. If you guys don't, I don't know what to say. Let's just reset this back on the track and yeah, all right. Well, that is the package transportation system pretty much completely set up. Isn't completely successful yet. I don't have the auto shooting thing. So next episode, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stop these flickering bits. Next episode, what we're going to do is set up the auto button presser thing, which is just gonna be a spud gun doing its shooting on a timer thing once it senses that the card is in place. And then I will show off the whole thing working in action, starting from the tomato, from the crop, to the planter thing. It might take a while, but I'm excited for it. So as always, I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, night, or evening. And I will see you next time.